You say potato, we say potato. But one thing we can all agree on is that restaurant mashed potatoes always taste better. So how do they do it? You don't need to be a culinary genius to know that the main ingredient in mashed potatoes is, well, potatoes. And one of the things that make mashed potatoes taste better at a restaurant is the fact that experienced chefs know which kinds are the best to use. Certain potatoes are known for being particularly delicious when cooked and mashed, for example, while some have other uses. Potatoes. Boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. The quality of the batch is important, too. At home, you may mash a few potatoes that look like they need to be cooked before they go bad. However, many restaurants pride themselves on serving mashed potatoes that are as good as any other dish. Spongy potatoes that are sprouting or look mangled and bruised are an absolute no-no. In the U.S., russet potatoes make for a great choice. The starchiness in this variety creates a fluffy texture instead of a dish that's stodgy, dense, or watery. There's no reason to use one type of potato, though. A restaurant might be cooking up all manner of potato dishes from fries to hash browns and have a lot of potato varieties in its kitchen. Yukon Gold potatoes make great mashed potatoes when combined with russets, as they don't absorb much water during cooking, which means they don't turn gooey when mashed. And for a skin-on mash with a subtly sweet flavor, you can't do much better than fingerling potatoes. Professional chefs always have a good set of sharp knives and a quality peeler at hand. The proper tools make light work of preparing potatoes, and this can make all the difference to the final result. Let's face it, good chefs are often perfectionists, too. So when they peel a potato, they'll often do so in seconds, and there won't be a speck of dirt or peel left. Even if the discolored parts of a potato can technically be eaten, restaurant-style mashed potatoes always look pure because these bits have been trimmed off. The prepped potatoes are then added to cold water and rinsed to get rid of any remaining impurities. It's also important not to cut the potato pieces too small. It's true that small pieces will cook in less time, but if they're too small, they'll absorb excess water and become soggy. Having the potatoes before cooking results in a serving that isn't too watery, allowing it to absorb any creamy, buttery ingredients that are subsequently added. Any chef worth their salt also knows that the potatoes need to be added to salted, cold water that is then gradually brought to a boil. If you don't want them to fall apart during cooking, you should never add potatoes to boiling water. When you make mashed potatoes, you start by boiling peeled potatoes in salted water before draining and mashing. Sounds reasonable, right? Surely there's no other way. But you might be missing a trick, as some restaurants actually steam their potatoes rather than boil them. This method takes no more effort than boiling. If you own a steamer basket, you can just add it to a pan of boiling water. Steamy. Steaming prevents the potatoes from soaking up too much water, which can lead to mash that's a sloppy mess. In a busy kitchen with pots and pans bubbling and boiling away, chefs need to multitask to the max. By throwing potatoes in a steamer, they give themselves more leeway with cooking times. And if the potatoes are on too long, they're not going to get ruined. You can't be totally gung-ho, however. As with boiling, potatoes should be cut into similar-sized pieces before being added to the steamer to ensure even cooking. Nobody enjoys watery mashed potatoes. Luckily, roasting a potato in its skin as you would a baked potato is sure to keep it nice and dry. Notably, the skins aren't used when actually mashing the potatoes, only the fluffy potato inside. If you do prefer your mashed potatoes rustic style, you might find it better to boil the potatoes with the skins on instead. Generally, roasted potato skins are a little too leathery to include in mashed potatoes. Try this yourself by pricking the potatoes before popping them in a hot oven. You can sit them on some salt on a tray, which also helps reduce moisture. You can also simply pierce the raw potatoes, cover the entire tray with aluminum foil, and bake them in an oven at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for about an hour. Once they have cooled enough to touch, remove the soft insides and fluff them up with some butter and cream. You can also add in some milk. If you want to keep your oven free, you can even cook air fryer baked potatoes for your mashed potatoes. Instead of boiling a few potatoes and mashing them plain, many restaurant chefs like to apply a little more finesse. Garlic and herbs infused in butter and cream add a flavor boost without overpowering your potatoes. Garlic. One infusion method involves adding garlic cloves to the water in which the potatoes are boiling. For an extra herby hit, you can also add fresh rosemary to milk and butter. Heat this in a pan and remove the stalks before pouring the mixture into the cooked potatoes. For a simpler garlic mashed potatoes recipe, you could mince garlic and add it to your milk and butter in a pan. Heat and combine this with boiled potatoes before mashing. 
This way, you'll get a garlicky mash without having to include large pieces of garlic. You can also grate garlic and add it to a mixture of butter and half and half before heating. Hot milk can be added directly to the potatoes with sour cream and butter. However, if you're enhancing your dairy with garlic and herbs, add them to melted butter first so the flavor can be extracted before it goes into the mashed potatoes. Restaurant chefs should know where all their kitchen equipment is located, but even they might not use a traditional masher. It turns out that there's more than one way to mash potatoes, and each results in a different texture. A ricer with fine holes breaks up the pieces of potato to create a consistency that's beautifully smooth, for example. A food mill works in a similar way. Perfectionists and pro chefs may use a tammy instead of, or in addition to, the ricer. This drum sieve slows down the mashing process a little, but if the goal is to make puree perfectly smooth mashed potatoes, then it's by far the best method out there. Pressing hot mashed potatoes through an everyday fine mesh sieve is another option. The rounded surface allows you to press down on the potatoes with the back of a large spoon. Some people also like to whiz up mashed potatoes using a hand mixer in order to achieve a restaurant-style result. Blenders or food processors might be tempting choices because they're good at pureeing foods, but they are generally too violent for mashed potatoes and will leave you with a gluey end product. It won't come as a huge surprise to find that restaurant chefs throw in huge quantities of butter when they make mashed potatoes. In fact, butter is the secret ingredient in basically all restaurant dishes. It is usually the, the first thing and the last thing in, in just about every pan. Really? Uh, yeah, that's why restaurant food tastes better than home food a lot of the times. <laughs> It's particularly useful in mashed potatoes, though, as it helps create that classic and luxurious velvety texture. One trick that'll elevate your mashed potatoes and contribute some depth of flavor involves adding brown butter into the mix. Martha Stewart likes to add brown butter and cream to her super soft mashed potatoes. For three pounds of potatoes steamed until they are fork tender, she adds a stick and a half of butter. Instead of tossing the butter straight into the mash, however, she melts it in a saucepan. The butter turns brown during the melting process, at which point it can be added to the cream before whisking into the mashed potatoes. This brown butter enhances the taste of the dish with a wonderfully warming, nutty flavor. Be warned, though, restaurant chefs are used to watching more than one pan at a time, but when making brown butter, you do need to give it your full attention. That rich color and taste can turn bitter and burnt if you don't take it off the heat soon enough. Mashed potatoes really don't have to be an afterthought, and they can truly shine as a spectacular side or sophisticated entree. Plenty of restaurants serve loaded mashed potatoes, for example. One classic way to load up mashed potatoes is to add cheese, bacon, and sour cream. A more luxurious version includes fontina cheese, shaved truffle, and chives. Blue cheese makes for a popular addition to mashed potatoes, especially if you want to give them a creamy tang. Onion peps up mashed potatoes, too, while chili flakes can cut the blandness with a little heat. Dill or other fresh herbs, both woody and soft, lend a distinctive taste and freshness, and they all go well with garlic. Really, there aren't any rules when it comes to experimenting with mashed potatoes, so restaurants can really go to town with their own unique creations. Mashed potatoes always taste better at a restaurant, in part because you don't have to do any of the actual cooking or clean up after. Oh, Christ almighty. Sinew and nicotine base. Keep back, keep back. The entire thing's gone rotten. It's fun coming up with your own recipe at home, sure, but sometimes you can't beat someone else doing it for you. Similarly, restaurants employ labor-saving devices that aren't common in home kitchens. If you want to make mashed potatoes in advance and keep it warm and delicious until it's time to serve, you might want to try the sous vide method. To do this, place a vacuum-sealed bag of pre-made mashed potatoes into the sous vide machine so that the water completely covers it. At 150 degrees Fahrenheit, it should be ready to serve for the next 24 hours. This will save you a heap of trouble if you're serving mashed potatoes as a side dish, especially if you need to give a lot of focus to the mains. There's a good chance that at some point or another, you've added cream into your homemade mashed potatoes. This certainly gives the dish a luxurious essence as well as a rich flavor. One trick you might want to try, however, is to heat the cream before adding it. This method is used by restaurants to reheat pre-prepared mashed potatoes, and heating up the cream ensures it won't cool down your potatoes too much. In the U.S., mashed potatoes aren't usually served as smooth as this. However, you might find they have this consistency when served at an upmarket eatery or a French-style bistro. To make this style of mashed potatoes at home, bring the heavy cream to a simmer before mixing it together with the butter and potatoes. Of course, the amount you use really depends on how rich and decadent you want those potatoes to be.
When you're whipping up a weekday dinner, you might make your own mashed potatoes too. And the chances are that if you're tired, you don't want to start messing around with garnishes to make your mash look pretty. But you could be missing out on some much needed flavor by foregoing garnishes. One of the reasons mashed potatoes always taste better at a restaurant is because the garnish looks and tastes good too. Simple garnishes often sprinkled on top include green onions and chopped chives. They add a peppery contrast with a bright green color and herby flavor to freshen up the mashed potatoes. You might enjoy cracking some black pepper on top, but white pepper is even better because it has a slightly milder flavor. Fresh parsley works well too, and you can't go wrong with a pat of butter. No matter how much is in the potatoes already, the sight of extra butter melting on top of mashed potato peaks is nothing less than mouthwatering. Who could possibly say no to that?